Hello and welcome once again to Learning Digital Photography. I'm going to show you today how to create a template for a calendar. I recently put out a 2010 calendar of some of my favorite wildlife images and got asked the question of how I created that template inside of Photoshop. So I thought I would share that with you here today on the blog. So I'm inside of Photoshop. I've got Adobe Photoshop CH3 extended. This uh, technique will, will work with most versions of Photoshop. So this is pretty much transparent from one version to another and it's also not platform specific. I'm running this on Windows. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a new custom size and I decided to choose for my image gallery uh, dimensions of 8x10. Uh, that works well with calendars. It's a nice size image. It's not too big. It's not too small. But I want to have a one inch border that goes all the way around the entire image kind of like around this box here. So that means I need to accommodate for an additional inch on the left, on the right, an additional inch up top, and then I want two additional inches below so I can put a little title in there. So I'm going to create a custom template in here here, and you'll notice that I have my dimensions set to 12 inches uh, left to right the, uh, for width, and then I've got 11 inches set for the height, so that will allow me one inch all the way around plus an extra inch on the bottom. So I'm going to and select OK, and that's going to create a new blank template. So what I'm going to do inside this blank template, you notice I have my grid guide set to visible here. I'm basically going to take these grid guides, and I'm going to left click with my mouse in Windows, or, commit, or just click with my mouse in uh, uh, Apple. I'm going to set this at the one inch mark and I'm using the grid guide over here to find that exact one inch mark. Then I'll do the same thing down here but I'm going to set it two inches up from the bottom and then I'll do the same thing with the vertical grid guides and I'll set those to the one inch and I will set it to the ten inch mark as well, or excuse me, the 11 inch mark as well. So now I've got an inch all the way around plus an extra inch on the bottom. Now I'm just going to do a shift backspace on Windows and that's going to commit the foreground color. I'm actually going to switch this to the background color because my colors are reversed right now. So now this will commit the white layer to the background like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and insert the text that I'm going to want to have in the scene. So you notice my foreground color is set to uh, black for the text. So I'm going to go ahead and type my name in here. I'm just going to type Jason Anderson. And if I can spell right, I will spell photography. I'm going to go ahead and commit that with a control enter. And then I'll slide this over a little closer to center. I'm probably going to want to scale this a little, so I'm going to uh, shift. Uh, control T to scale it. I'm going to use the shift key so it'll scale proportionally speaking until I get it to about the size I want. That looks pretty good. Control enter to commit that again. And now when I select control A, that's going to select the entire image. Select the V tool now and that will activate the move tool and now I can just click up here where the mouse is and I can align the horizontal center and boom that will align the text. And then I can add another text layer and I'm going to add another text layer and put a copyright logo down here. And in Windows I'm going to use Alt 0169. Oops, I think I typoed that too. So Alt 0169 will produce a copyright image. And I'm going to go ahead and control enter to commit that. And then control T, I'm going to transform this a little so you can see it's a copyright logo. I probably normally would not want it this big, but I'm going to do that here for the purposes of visibility. And I'm going to hit Control Enter again to uh, commit that. Then I'll select the V tool and I'll go ahead and position this down like so. Now I've, that I've done that and I have that set, I'm going to go ahead and select both these layers. And I'm going to slide them down into a group. And that's going to position them all in their own group. And I probably might want to name those. You don't have to necessarily. But what I'm going to do in that group now is I'm going to slide the opacity down to about 45%. Because that's about the opacity that I like. And now it does the same amount of opacity on both the title and the copyright logo. I think that works fairly well. But then the cool part is now that I have this template set, I can go ahead and place an image in there. So I'm going to go ahead and select File, Place. And I'm going to go ahead and pick an image. And you can see from all these images that I've got uh, several different file types in here. I've got PSD files, I've got TIFF files, and I've got JPEG files. You want to start with the PSD files because those are going to give you the highest resolution, which produces a better print quality. For the purposes of this tutorial, though, I'm going to go with the JPEG just because it will load faster. So I'm going to go ahead and select the ostrich, and I'm going to click Place. And it's going to bring that JPEG image in and this is opening camera raw so I'll just go ahead and click OK to accept the defaults for the uh, exposure value settings and now you notice it's not committed yet so what I can do is I can slide this around and when I do it's going to snap right on the grid 
So now it's snapped left and right, and now I can just scale this as needed to fit my image dimensions like so. And it's snapped right into place. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, or alternatively, I could click the checkbox that you just saw disappear up here. And now here comes the fun part. Now, if you want to add a stroke or other kind of a layer style to your image, we're going to go ahead and let's just change this to black. So I'm going to change that to zero. Put a nice little drop shadow in there. Let's move it around just a smidge. I didn't want the stroke, I wanted the drop shadow. So now that we have the drop shadow selected, I can click and drag outside and move that around. If, it, if I can highlight it, there we go. So now you can slide the drop shadow around to get the right position that you want. And I like it right about there. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I've got that drop shadow set. What I could do now is uh, save this as its own template PSD file. You'll notice in here I've already done a couple of them, so if I were to save it as a PSD, you would see that there are two landscape templates already in there as PSDs. I'm not going to save it right now, but just did want you to see that's the procedure for saving it as a PSD. Once you save it as a PSD, what you would then want to do is you would want to flatten it and then you would want to resize it for the dimensions that you're going to be outputting to so that way everything resizes at the same scale. Now here, here's, what, here, here's what the best part is. Now that you've saved your template and you flattened the first image that you're going to use, you just go find the second image that you're going to use. Grab that one. So we'll grab a different picture. Let's pick the butterfly this time. And we'll place that inside here. And it's going to open the raw uh, Adobe Camera Raw as well. So I'll just go ahead and uh, click OK to accept that. It's going to prepare another smart object. And I'm just going to slide that up and it's going to slap on the grid. And I'm just going to scale it to fit. And you notice how it snapped right in. Click Enter. And it's committed to the uh, multi layer document. Now, here's the cool part you can delete this old image, and I would recommend you do that to help save on file size. But before you do that, just grab your effects, slide up to the new image, and they stick right with it. Then you can delete the ostrich image below. So, if I were to take this off, you're not going to see anything. So, it's a pretty cool effect. And then you could flatten that, resize it, save it as, as its own image type, and when you're done, you'll have all 12 of these images that you can then uh, upload to whatever calendar uh, software that uh, your uh, e-tailer uses with you. I uploaded mine to lulu.com and I'll go ahead and throw a link over on the blog that will show you the finished product calendar. That includes both of these images and 12 others that I'm particularly fond of. But that should answer the question for those of you that have been asking about how I created that template. If you have any other questions, please feel free to email me. The address as always is jason at canonblogger.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye.